Hey everyone, my name is Drew and we're here and this is going to be the quarterfinals of the UBL Season 7 and we are up against JV once again and his Atlanta Victinis. And this is going to be a really, really tough matchup, obviously. We just played him a couple weeks ago and it was a really, really fun match, a really close match. And a lot of things kind of crystallized for me in those moments. But the truth is, I largely really like that team and I really liked kind of the way that I built it and a lot of how that team functioned up against Jay. So the team this week is going to be very, very similar. There are going to be some very key differences obviously we do have the slow king this week without difficult of a time i had dealing with keldio in the first game i'm hoping this will help me out especially since i showed last time that i'm willing to go into a game without slow king would kind of make him have to respect a bunch of my other options i think best case scenario would be if it kind of disincentivizes the Opsigun to come in because after the game last time he told me that Opsigun was essentially a sack because it really didn't have a role especially without the slow king there so that would be obviously best case scenario some other minor adjustments, this Vicavolt is actually able to KO a max HP Scizor. If something similar comes again, then I will be able to deal with it. Tornadus has superpower this time, so if I am ever caught in a similar situation, I would like to think that I'd be able to catch the Obstagoon. And this time the Cinderace is Boots, it's not banded. I kind of felt like I needed the opportunity to change up moves. And this also allowed me to add on Sucker Punch, which I do think would have been a huge, huge help last time against Dragapult. And I think might have a chance to do a lot of work here. And the last major adjustment that I could really think of here is I'm going to end up bringing a Sand Rush extra this time. Last time it was Mold Breaker because Jay does have a bit of a slow team other than a handful of mons that extra doesn't outspeed anyway. So just being able to Mold Breaker through a bunch of abilities like Levitate on the wheezing felt really strong for me in, in the first game but this time i really want kind of want to, to prioritize all that offense with this extra drill so for this time around um i'm just going to lean into a more sand rush strategy try to punch dense early into the team and kind of take it from there and kind of orchestrate an end game that i can kind of work with here but with that i'm gonna get right into the match now i did lead off with a cinder ace as you guys saw but it was honestly kind of a catch-all thing because i really wanted to be able to catch whatever uh wanted to lead and here we do see a Dragapult lead now. Obviously, last time he does have to think about me being potentially banded like I was last time. This time, um, I try to take advantage of whatever he wants to do by going for a Sucker Punch early and just trying to see how Jay kind of plays off of this. I do want to kind of be more aggressive because the Dragapult was more of an issue for me last time and he goes for a sub straight away. So I'm not sure if he if this was kind of a playoff of last game. It probably was, but last time I was just content to kind of you turn out the of here even with the band and i think he really wanted to get to not be in front of this cinder race and have a sub up and obviously that um would have been great for him here now here i really have to think through kind of what i want to do i really want a sucker punch I, because i do think that this thing can just do a lot of damage and two hit me with dragon darts but i end up going for a pyroball because um it, it did also take me a second to just run a couple calcs and note and see that pyroball should always break a sub so i do go for the pyroball here and i am able to break this up now this is obviously going to be huge because even if i do see the cinder going down and unfortunately uh with that fail turn one i do think it is not going to be a possibility for me to keep the cinder race for the remainder of this match i'm probably gonna have to give it up just to not keep not let this thing stay behind a sub and now that i know that I'm, and i'm trying to work this scenario to make that happen um i just go for a pyroball again i really can't allow this thing to kind of dragon dance and and um wreak more havoc in case uh and try to play off of if i would shoot sucker punch again so i really kind of have to manage these these mind games a little bit goes for a sub again again maybe expecting me to want to click sucker punch and i really did think about it right um i end up going for the pyro wall and i miss which is super duper unfortunate but now i'm thinking how do i salvage this do i get oh i also take a look at my team just to think to myself do i get six owed by this if this thing gets another dragon heads up right because that is a very open question at this point um but instead I kind of look at my options again. I think this is going to be the moment where he tries to attack me. Well, okay, I look at my TV again. But I, but I think to myself, this is going to be the moment where he tries to attack me. Uh, especially because I, I ran these calcs the, the first time, and I very distinctly remember in the first game saying to myself that if this if this dragon pole is banded, then it just straight up KOs me with a dragon darts. So I think he has it in his head as well that a plus one dragon darts should be able to KO a Cinderace pretty darn easily. So he goes for that here. And I take advantage of that by getting a sucker punch off. 
keeping this thing out from behind a sub and and as I was talking about in, in the last game and I'm and I can see it right now uh, it does pick up a KO straight up at plus one but again this thing is kept from behind a sub and I'm looking through all of my options here right because so some certain things that I'm trying to think through here uh, is if I can kind of throw my slow king in this situation because the fact that that this thing is a very likely more more physically uh, oriented does potentially mean that uh, it wouldn't have go stab right this this uh, slow king is kind of meant to deal with more of the hex set that he brought in the first game and my gigalith is very specially defensive kind of meant to take on more of that zapdos and and especially or oriented Dragapult, but I'm kind of running calcs to see how well I take this and if I can KO back because obviously that's going to be huge um, and, and and after I take some time to kind of run some numbers I really didn't feel comfortable giving up that much damage on my slow king uh, Especially because I think it had a chance to KO I'd have to look at the numbers again, but I believe it had a chance to KO and so I really felt more comfortable just going just taking a short um, hit with um this gigalith and being, being able to hit it back now obviously this is going to be a little bit problematic because i might not get enough rock blast hits i could get two rock blast hits and be put in a really precarious situation but this was kind of the situation that i kind of had to be in if, for the moment uh we took that a little bit better than i honestly thought in this moment but we have to just hope that i don't get like two rock blast hits uh we ended up getting three which should have been enough with sand but we do get a fourth which was um pretty dope in the overall look of this but Again, uh, who knows what would have happened if that powerball di didn't miss? If, if um, a couple things had, had gone differently, it probably doesn't affect th this state too too much. But it would have been interesting. It would have been interesting to see if it affected any kind of mind games going into uh, once that thing is out from behind a sub. If he thinks that I'm going to click sucker punch or anything, or if I can force an over prediction or anything to that effect. But. We're here now. Unfortunately, we did have to give up the Cinderace and a bunch of HP onto Gigalith. But uh, with this thing in, he does want to go into the the Keldeo. Now, the Keldeo is super duper scary because last time, I think he expected my Slow King to come quite a bit more. And I, I did get to see the set afterwards. And it did have Toxic specifically for the, spe specifically for the Slow King. And that's... Kind of how I expected him to want to deal with the Slow King. I expected, if anything, for him to want to click Toxic right away, get a Toxic off on the Slow King, and um, pivot out, kind of force me into awkward positions from there. But him clicking Flip Turn right away kind of surprised me in the moment. And it kind of puts me in a very awkward position, obviously, because now I'm in front of an opposite goon. But, again, that, that kind of thought process was based on the kind of dragapult set that he brought first the first time because it made a ton more sense to me seeing the kind of relationship with a, a keldeo that, that tries to get a a toxic off onto onto slow king and then pivot out into into dragapult which can then hex on me and that's why i had to have a kasibi right on this set but uh especially now with a completely different dragapult he I think Jay felt a lot more free to not have to build with that in mind, so he didn't have to necessarily rely on getting a toxic onto the slow king. So he kind of felt a lot, a lot more aggressive, able to kind of pivot in now with the flip turn and maybe going for other other things. Spoiler: I don't think it ever comes up in this game, but he replaced toxic with with Aqua Jet, which again just kind of lends to the to the idea that um, just kind of lends to the idea that. Uh, he's not going to rely on Toxic for this low king. I run a lot of calcs because I am in a very bad position against his Obstagoon. And I go out into my Tornadus, which I, I calc it out. I, I just barely take a, a knockoff. And and I'm hoping, I'm, my hope here is that I can catch him into, into those same patterns from the last game. Where I was kind of forced into hurricaning this thing. And... And the only way that I was able to KO this thing was because I got the confusion and, I, and it hit itself in confusion. And also, I'm thinking to myself, man, I really hope this sand ends soon because I because in my head, uh, I'm going to KO myself to the sand 
no matter what happens next turn and ideally i would like that to not happen but again the bigger picture here is by bringing in the in this tornadoes i kind of want i'm kind of hoping that he's been conditioned by the last game to believe that i just have to throw a, a, a hurricane out there and just kind of hope for the best but this thing comes in and i just kind of meekly superpower into it it only does a quarter which is fine, but it's not... Uh, I, I probably would have been better served by just clicking Hurricane and ideally landing it, obviously. And I thought I was going to get KO'd by this round of sand, but I don't. I take it on one, on three. So I get to get one more hit off, is what I meant to say. And if everything looks to be okay... Oh, I, I think I also have to check here if this, if this is going to be the last round of Sandstorm, because I was kind of hoping that I could KO this thing with a Grass Knot, and then I can potentially get one more and more hit off after this turn with the Tornadus. So it's not a complete sack. However, he reveals Rindoberry, which surprised me for sure. But uh, it probably wouldn't have, wouldn't have even been KO. This is where he reveals just how specially defensive this thing is, and this thing is very, very specially defensive. But... Uh, He's able to get rocks up, and again, uh, I'm thinking again back to the idea that uh, I'm hoping the sandstorm goes away now, and it does, thankfully. But we can go on from here. He obviously has to respect a grass knot, so I kind of think that there's a possibility of him switching out. I go for Hurricane regardless because, yeah, now he's able to, to withdraw, and I do kind of call that semi correctly. But now he goes into Zapdos because he knows that I have the Weather Ball. For, I, 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 I was I was telling a handful of people uh, from last time that I, I I can't like catch him off guard again on another weather ball, so I don't really know what to do here. But but the confusion here was actually kind kind of gave me a little bit of hope because because it made me think that this tornado could st stick around a little bit. And judging from that damage, it did it just does look like the Zapdos is a lot more uh, especially defensive or at least more uh, equipped to take on hurricanes from this from this tornado than, than last time so that was a little bit of a of a clue as to how to play out the rest of this but it honestly really really surprised me when i saw him go for a volt switch because i felt empowered to kind of stay in go, go for a hurricane because i really thought he would he would kind of put himself in a bad position if uh i i landed a hurricane and the zapdos hit itself in confusion because then i'd be in a position where i'd, I'd be only I, I, I'd be only one or two kind of lucky turns away from being able to KO the Zapdos for absolutely free, right? So I, that felt really unnecessarily risky to me, but Jay took the risk. It obviously worked out, and he's able to get in the the Obstacle for free, and I have to now figure out how the heck I'm going to deal with that, right? Because I really don't know how at this point. Um, I believe the conclusion that I come to here is I have to go into... I have to go into Gigalith and set up my my extra draw. However, um, this there were a couple moments of, of regret happening here because I was really wishing that my that my slow king was Colbert in this moment. Obviously, I, I went for Kasi because the Dragapult was such a threat in this moment, but. I really wanted to. Oh no! I actually go into Vigil. Yeah, you know, because I, I, I was running some calcs. Vigil is really, really physically defensive. Not really physically defensive. It's moderately physically defensive. You can see, right? Even now, I'm, I'm going between both of the options in my head. But um, this Vigil is able to take a hit, and it is able to kind of um, manage certain things. So in my head, I'm thinking, um, this Vigil is really the only way that I kind of break through this thing. I think in in the moment, I was thinking through a whole bunch of different kind of branching storylines, and I had to be content with the fact that 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 really the only way that I have a chance of, of winning this is if I break the obstacle sooner rather than later, and the only way that I do that is if I give up a bunch of a bunch of damage uh, onto my Vigavolt. But the this thing comes in really uh, kind of aggressively, which was interesting to me, but. Uh, I didn't even think about think twice about it. I just collect energy ball. Obviously, this thing is super specially defensive, but it's given up. It, it had to give up its Rindo Berry, which means that uh, I can come in now and get energy ball off. Now, this was actually a roll, and I believe it was a roll in my favor. I don't quite 100% remember, but 
uh, it was a role that was orchestrated by by breaking the Rando Barry and and a whole bunch of those turns that happened before. Him. However, all, all all that came together, it allowed me to pick up this KO, and now I'm in not a great position, but not an awful one, right? Zapdos comes in. I believe I just yeah I, I, I believe I just tried to get out of here click Volt Switch. I expect him to, to potentially want to with Volt Switch. I expect, expecting me to switch out goes for a Roost, which is obviously not great, but uh, it causes it causes me to not have to give up damage onto the Vicavolt, which is huge vis-a-vis -vis the Obstagoon specifically, right? Because the Obstagoon is still really oppressive for my team. With especially again, I keep kicking myself for not being Colber on this on this slow king, and it's a perfect moment now to be able to bring in the Glyph. Even if this thing goes down now, I'm able to kind of um, set up my extra draw. Even if he plays games or chooses around a bunch, I can. It sets up uh, extra draw, and I can kind of manage to make some, some things happen. Um, actually, one thing that I'm thinking through now is: is it probably would have been a stronger play to make a double switch into extra draw because he would never click Heat Wave in this position. We never click. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that probably would have been a much stronger play. I think I clicked Stealth Rocks here, actually. Or no, I, or no, I believe I already have Stealth Rocks up. Either way, it's not the most relevant. The most relevant thing here is probably would have been a better play to make the hard switch into in Exodrill. That probably would have put me in a really strong position. Not strong, a very solid position. Um, Because at that point, I probably... Yeah, I don't know. It would have been an interesting move. But for reasons that will become clear later, uh, wouldn't have, it wasn't particularly game breaking, right? But I'm able to get some damage off with with Rock Blast and the Sandstorm, and at this point, I'm you know, I'm in the mindset that I can give up this Gigalith and be okay from this position. And um, and again, just to recap, I have a Slow King with a useless item on it. Which is feeling not great because of, because of the obscure here. My Vicavolt is really the only thing that manages it, other than um, specifically Exodrill under Sandstorm, right? So I'm just trying to make some things work, and I'm not. And even now, that's an interesting play uh, of me to not just go aggressively in a slow kick and try to pivot out with teleport. Even if I do think this thing has toxic, right? Getting a teleport off and kind of preserve preserving Gigalith and kind of. Forcing him to be onto the back foot a little bit is a little bit strange to me. Uh, yeah, that's a really odd play by me. If I, uh, I'll, I'll say just watching this back, but the bigger kind of thing here is I have this Exodor in. I can probably KO this thing, and I'm gonna expect this thing to, to want to switch out so I can source the ends. And um, as it were. I can this puts you in a position to kind of pick up a KO on anything on his team, right? And this extra is kind of built to get, uh, get to get a Swords Dance up on an incoming Zapdos because at plus at plus two, I do um, KO with Rock Slide on a on a Zapdos, but I make the wrong call. He he stays in, clicks Surf, and I get KO'd. Now, uh, as as bad as this looks, I will I will say. That uh, this didn't end up mattering. This didn't end up being as big of a play as obviously last time, the last game was because he had built a much much bulkier Keldeo, and this Keldeo in this game is designed to kind of take an EQ, and we ran some calcs afterwards. And if this Keldeo always took an uh, took an extra drill, uh, life orb EQ from this position, so. No matter what, I was never gonna, gonna be able to KO this Keldeo, and I was always going to go down to the surf no matter what happened. So I don't feel quite as bad about this play, and I feel like that's important uh, context to have looking back at this, but it does allow me to go into Vigable. I expected to pick up a KO. I don't pick up a KO, which was really, really concerning to me. But it lets me go into this, and I'm, I'm trying to think through any kind of, kind of lines I have towards winning this game, and any chance that I have of, of winning this game is going to come down to my Vicavolt being healthy enough to take a hit from from an Obstagoon. So that's why I fire off a heat wave or a, a thunder wave here, because obviously I know that I can take any hit. I can teleport out, 
and I kind of just have to hope that I that this Keldeo gets fu fully paired and I can freely roost up on the Keldeo because that'll allow me to KO the Keldeo and to be at, at max HP with the Vigable which is going to be again m my only path to be able to be able to KO the to break through this Obstagoon and be able to break through the rest of his team now obviously they're going to be huge impediments to doing that right the um the uh the Zapdos is is, is gonna if everything goes goes according to plan, if I'm able to to to, to KO the Keldeo, and then I'm able to to, to KO the Obstagoon because my because my Vigabolt is healthy, then I have to hope that that the that the Weezing is is a really kind of a physically defensive one in order to be able to take on the Exodrill, and so I can kind of take advantage of that I can potentially do a KO with the Vigabolt, but then the bigger kind of um, imp impediment to me winning is going to be the Zapdos and my biggest fear as I'm kind of thinking through all these lines in my head is that uh the Zapdos is going to be able to, f to freely roost I'm not going to be able to pair it which means it's going to be able to to roost resist my my stab attacks and uh it's going to be another stalemate like what was in the, the last game when I couldn't kill the scissor but now because it's, it's a Zapdos I'm not gonna be able to to KO the Zapdos, and uh, it's gonna be a very very similar kind of stalemate. So in my head, the, this is everything that, that I'm thinking of. But at the same time, I'm trying to take things one one step at a time. And even though that that's kind of the end game that I'm working towards, I'm kind of laying, laying down the groundwork, right? So 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 far, a couple of su successful things that have happened. I've been able to to um, to Thunder Wave. The Keldeo, go back into Vigable, roost up on it, KO it. We're here. Now the Zapdos is here. And it's even problematic because he reveals the Heat Wave. Now, last time he didn't have room for the Heat Wave because he kind of went with a kind of strategy just to stop the sand. He kind of rain dance plus Weather Ball, which uh, I didn't really expect to, to want to come this time, but I did expect it to, to have kind of a more utility moveset. And that heat wave really did throw me off. I, I didn't expect it to have such a strong hit for the Vigavolt. And that really kind of, I think, sealed the deal for him. I think at this point, I didn't even particularly um, particularly try to fight back anymore. Um, I I think, obviously, like I still try, try to hit this thing. But, um, but... I can kind of tell now that the Zapdos does have such a strong move against the Vigabolt that I can't even kind of play towards any kind of stalemate potentially. This is just kind of looking more, 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 more like a loss. I did kind of think through whether or not I should click Thunder Wave, expecting a, a Volt Switch is something to want to come in. But even if the Obstagoon does come in, I can't Thunder Wave it because it's already burned, right? And uh, I'm, it's just a really bad position for, for me to be in. But we do see uh, the, the Weezing come in. And uh, I teleport out, which is not the best in, in retrospect because I kind of wish that I had uh, been able to get a Thunder Wave off on this thing. But regardless, this is kind of the position that I had to be in because I needed to be able to try to 2 KO this thing anyway. But I think... Yeah, I think I'm going to try to roost up on this thing, trying to see, A, if I'm faster than this thing, and B, if I'm able to to get up a little bit healthier, because that's going to be crucial for being able to deal with the Obstagoon and being able to uh, KO, to KO this, this Weezing, potentially. This thing reveals to be pretty fast, as far as Weezings go, right? And KOs, which means it's also pretty offensive, and I found out after the game that this thing is neutralizing gas plus... Uh, scarfed overheat in order to 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 directly take on uh, in an extra draw, which uh, was not great for me because you guys can see that I kind of lost my nerve a little bit playing uh, playing with the extra drill. I really did. I really was kicking myself for not bringing a, a mold breaker extra drill here again. As soon as I saw the wheezing, I expected it to be to be levitate. And I felt like that really put me in a bad position because um, I really thought that I had kind of disincentivized a a Weezing to, to want to come. 
by the way that the last game ha had played out. But the fact that I saw it this time, and the fact that I didn't bring bring Mold Breaker this time, made me a bit gun shy about aggressively bringing bringing the, the extra drill and being able to t either just click Sword Dance in order to either uh, click EQ through the Wheezing Levitate or Rock Slide into his Aptos under Sand and be able to 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 just straight up KO things, right? It was a good bring, obviously. It, it worked out in, in the end, and that is going to be how our UBL season draws to a close. It was a really, really fun season. Thank you to everybody. I was able to battle against. It was a ton, a ton of fun, and I hope we do it again, but uh, that is going to be season seven. Obviously, great game to Jay, and great game to everybody. Moving on to the semis and the finals, and whoever ends up winning this thing. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll be back really, really soon with more weeks of other things, but... That'll be it for the UBL. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll see you again. Out.